Hey everybody, we're checking in with the Bulldogs Robot in 30 Hours team coming out of Kettering University and a uh, fantastic machine that they're going to be showing us here today and we're going to bring them in. So I'm going to let them introduce themselves as they go through and then go through a few questions we have in chat. If you're watching live, if you have any questions for this team, make sure you post it in chat and take at first updates now. So Bulldogs, why don't you introduce yourself? Uh, I'm Eric Meza. I'm the uh, Vice President of B Section First Alumni Association at Kettering. I'm uh, Maggie. I'm the president sorry, of the uh, First Alumni Association at Kettering B-Section. My name is Ben Kosick. I am the one of the RI3D co-leads for First Alumni Association at Kettering. Awesome. Well, thanks for taking the time to talk to us a bit more about uh, your bot and things. And let's just dive right into it. Uh, ultimate goal was here. How did you initially tackle uh, this challenge going through? And then we want to get into uh, some of your mechanisms and successes and failures as well. Um, so how we tackled it was, you know, the game was revealed and then we started, um, you know, we started looking at, uh, you know, the point breakdown to see what would be uh, most worth it. Um, and then from there we decided what mechanisms we would want to focus on. Well, so what are some of those mechanisms? Can you dive a bit more into that for us? Yeah, so some of our mechanisms we have, a, so we made like a priority list. So obviously we need a drivetrain. Um, and then next we wanted to do a collection system. I'm looking over here because we have a priority list <laughs> yeah. there. Um, and then we decided that shooting at the, you know, power shot level from the line would be worth it because then um, shooting from the different goals would probably be easier. Um, and then after that, we would, uh, we'd like to do the wobble, um, the wobble goal. And, um, and then we did, you know, we decided to do that and either you know the different zones and then we would look into doing it outside of the uh the field okay, uh, what are you looking at using for a drive train on your bot uh we're just using a uh any mark uh tile runner very cool it has the uh, four orbital 20s uh it's pretty fast yeah so this is our the video of our flywheel <clears throat> um shooter mechanism that we're currently developing and just continuously prototyping and you know making better as we go um, so our goal with it was that we really wanted to have a fixed position because we use our knowledge from just FRC and our robot in three days in particular, where our fixed angle shooter was a really consistent tool. And it was actually something that a lot of teams ended up using. So we wanted to apply that same concept to FTC because we think there's a lot of knowledge you, you can gain from studying FRC. Um, and from our testing, we found that using this one angle, we were able to hit down the um, the power shots or the poles and also consistently hit in medium goals. So something to ask about that, is, um, you know, from the angle itself, is this the height and elevation you're also looking at shooting at? Because that will definitely change then if you're looking at shooting at a different elevation. Um, it's slightly different. It's going to be slightly higher. However, I believe they're just going to angle it down. It's going to be a bit of fine tuning when we actually put it back onto the robot. Um, that's what they're working on right now because we had to get our mounter or uh, hopper all mounted before we could get the shooter mounted as well as the intake. Well, let's talk about your intake a little bit and uh, what you're doing for that. I know we have a video uh, for that as well. Uh, so talk us through it. What's worked well, what hasn't worked well uh, for this intake so far? Uh, anyone take it? Yeah. So, you know, we're kind of going off of a intake based on, um, you know, rescue. So a lot of teams, what they did was in uh, the FTC game a rescue, there's balls and blocks. So they would collect all of them and then funnel it. And uh, surgical tubing was used commonly. And uh, as you can see in the video here, we found that this works just as well with the rings. Um, so we're doing a, a similar thing and then we're going to funnel it to a single, uh, a single, you know, ring line. So. Awesome. Uh, you know, looking uh, at your robot as we go through, and, and we might, hopefully we might be able to get on, on camera in a little bit as well too, but uh, looking at what's going on with that, you know, obviously the time crunch is coming up right now. What might you not be able to accomplish that you wanted to set out and do? Where, where have you seen things that you're struggling more than what you anticipated? Uh, so the wobble goal is actually one of the things that we really wanted to go after because there's a huge amount of points available. Um, we actually have our prototype for it here. Uh, we really wanted to be able to pick it up and put it outside of the field and get all of the um, points that we possibly could. However, we kind of realized like after like about halfway that packaging a mechanism for that within 30 hours was going to be very tough. Um, we've gone through 
I don't know how many different iterations just trying to come up with ways that we can fit our mechanism inside of it. Um, it's been a struggle, and we're tr we have one more version that we're going to pursue before we try and figure out what the um, best ways for teams are to manipulate it just like on the ground because we found that just pushing around the device, um, the wobble goal could actually lead to knocking it over a lot. So we really want to try and come up with like a reliable way for teams to move it. So, you know, as a team speaking about maybe some advice for teams and things, what are things that you've said, hey, you know, as teams are first starting out, what do they need to prioritize? Where, what are things they need to really look out for? Uh, and what has really challenged you the most other than the wobble goal? Uh, yeah, so um, just kind of like in terms of just collectively, like learning how to prototype and everything, we really took a big approach of just dividing and conquering. And this is a game where you think that some of these tasks are frequent and that you know they've been done in the past, but there's a lot of differences within the game pieces and the way that the field is set up, you know, most you never really see an FTC field that's as empty as this. And it's um it's just it's just been very interesting in testing all these game pieces and really learning how to manipulate them to your advantage. And that's kind of what we've been doing with each of our prototypes that we've been developing and just like learning how can we easel our way around some of those flaws that or you know, benefits that we could find from them. Yeah, and kind of adding on to that, like these rings, like it, there's a lot of um, knowledge you can gain from uh, 2013 because like, it's the same type of shape. However, the Frisbees in 2013, they were very rigid, whereas these have a lot of give For up. For FRC, yeah. Yeah, for FRC, yes. Um, so it's you can gain some knowledge from there, but at the end of the day, you still got to come up with like a pretty different system. Well, let's talk about this uh, surgical tubing and the uh, hopper that you have. Uh, coming in here now this I think this is the official product right that's what it looks like to me so yeah uh, this, is, this is something we're trying to focus on it's a uh, it's a U hopper um, so the idea of this is that we would be able to collect and shoot from the same side so you know the rings come out you know towards the robot and then you're shooting in the same direction as that the rings come out so we figured that shooting and collecting from the same uh, direction would be beneficial what do you think a realistic cycle time is for teams in this game? Like, have you have you done some of that calculation saying, hey, um, this is what we think we might actually be able to do or, or realistically actually accomplish? We think a, like, a fairly decent team would be able to do a cycle of three rings in about 10 seconds. Um, uh, we think that, like, a, an excellent team could probably uh, reduce that to, you know, closer to five or six. Yeah, when we were testing out like the uh, ring placement, we were trying to see if we could get any consistency on them, and it just was not there. So you're going to have to be, if you're able to somehow grab these rings while they're rolling, I don't know if any teams are, but that would be something to just dramatically inc uh, decrease cycle time. Um, otherwise, you're going to have to be chasing these rings, and then they're going to fall on their side, and that's when you can get them. And that's honestly going to be the biggest bottleneck. Now, from a consistency, we talked about shooting earlier, and... So the rings, though, they might be hard for pickup, but shooting them looks like they're pretty consistent overall. Have you seen anything in regards to, uh, you know, the, the squishiness of the rings? Is there any variability between those uh, in regards to how much compression uh, you might use in your shooter? Uh, we haven't really run into any consistency with our rings. We've tried to, we've tried to like, get them as field tested as possible, and they've still been fairly consistent ring to ring. Um, so that doesn't seem to be much of an issue, but... Um, I don't know, Ben, do you have anything? I, yeah, more? I think one thing to look out for is they tend, they, you know, drastically change shape the more you compress them. You know, they start to bow, um, which can really affect shooting. Um, so, you know, obviously you need compression if you're going to be doing a flywheel shooter like us, but at the same time, not too much because then, you know, it, it probably won't work out too well. Can you, can you run me through some of the, the numbers on this? So the shooter that we have up in here, it looks like it's a, a direct drive, but what motor are you using? Uh, what, what percent or what RPM is uh, this being output at? Yeah, so this is a, it's just a direct, uh, you know, no gearbox straight off of a uh, Andy Mark never rest motor. Uh, you know, the Andy Mark says the no load uh, RPM is uh, 66 or 6,600. Um, and we're just running it at full power. We were just plugging it directly into a battery, um, you know, just, just for, you know, testing in this, in this case. 
makes a lot of sense. So as we start to wrap up here, uh, any last things that you want teams to know about? Uh, or, or, of course, we'll uh, let's ask you first, where can we find the stream going on right now for you guys? Because we want to make sure, you know, we want to have all these streams up. You can have multiple streams up. Go check out some other teams. So where can people find out more information about the Bulldog Robot and 30 Hours team? Yeah, so we are currently um, streaming on Twitch. We've been streaming for the last, you know, however, since since the games kicked off on Four um, hours. 24 hours <laughs> on um, twitch.tv forward slash um, Kettering RI3D. We are also uploading consistently on YouTube where you can find a lot of fun, you know, some tips about this year's game, um, a lot of in-depth materials on the actual game pieces and the field itself that we found beneficial to us when developing the prototypes and just learning about the game and the strategies more. And that's kind of the big hint that I would definitely tell teams to go look at. Very cool. Well, we appreciate the time. Uh, before we wrap up here, any last things you want to let teams know about here on air? Um, I don't have anything, Ben. No, I, I think I think that's about it. Good luck to all teams. Um, I hope you're able to make an amazing robot. Well, thank you so much, Kettering University, for popping in. We're going to head back over to uh, our main uh, team, Reno, here. And uh, thanks again, Kettering University. Good luck to you throughout the rest of this challenge. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and Tier 2 Plus subscribers on Twitch, keeping fun loud, live, and independent. Thanks to Rev Robotics and GoBuildUp for supplying components and providing on-stream giveaways.